Everybody likes to get gifts, but what makes that even better is when the gift is so much more than we expected. So if you're expecting a tie or a toaster or socks and you actually get a week-long vacation in Fiji, all the better. Well, I like to think about that in the light of discussion and reflection on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I like to reflect first what Pope Francis said. Pope Francis said, first and foremost, the greatest gift, he said the par excellence, the gift par excellence, is the Holy Spirit himself. Now we need to think and reflect about that for a minute. How beautiful it is that, that we're not just receiving a gift, here's a gift or here's a gift, but the giver himself, that the Holy Spirit is given to us. Huh? So when we reflect on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the starting point is always that that the greatest gift that we have in the Holy Spirit is more than we could possibly imagine, more than we expected, and that is the gift of the Spirit himself. But in the light of that, we know that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. He gives us uh, gifts that are spoken of in the Old Testament and of the New Testament. An image that I like to reflect on when thinking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit um, is a really simple image. Actually, the Holy Spirit is a wind. And, and the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are sails on a boat. The wind is blowing and the sails catch the wind and move the boat. When I was little, we would go sailing. My family liked to sail when we grow up. And I must admit that there were times when I was sailing, I didn't like it very much because you're just kind of middle of the day, not much wind. You just kind of sit there and just kind of bobbing in the middle of the lake. But the coolest thing is, is when the wind was really blowing and the sails, you, you would pull up the sails and it would catch all the wind. And, and I loved it because every now and then you'd have so much wind and the sails were so tight that you're on danger, almost this danger of the boat tipping. And that was the coolest thing. Me and my brothers, that, that was the best part of sailing was, was the excitement and the zeal and the passion that there was with, with the, the wind just blowing the boat almost to the point of tipping, but never quite. Well, every now and then tipping, but nothing that bad. I mean, there was something really exhilarating like that. And I th again, I think that speaks to the wildness, the wild goose, the wildness of the Holy Spirit that wants to, wants to blow the, our, the sails of our ship and blow the boat so that it's alive, so that it's moving, not so it's stagnant, but so it's moving. And, and that's really what the gifts of the Holy Spirit do. Life in the Spirit is never dull. I love to tell people God is full of surprises. People ask me, is your life boring? Is your life monotonous? And I say, no two days are ever the same. Um, I think when we really dare to give our lives over to the Holy Spirit, that's when things get exciting. That's when things get really fun. Um, it can be a little scary because you do lose control in a sense of my plans, my ideas. But when you can get beyond that, oh my goodness, the hundredfold of it is just Incredible, you know, things that you never thought you would be doing. Um, opportunities you never knew were possible. And, and I think when we, God willing, get to heaven and can look back on our lives, we'll see those moments before us where, wow, that's when I gave it over to the Holy Spirit because that's when fireworks happened, you know? And um, if we try to play too safe within the bounds of what we think is reasonable, I think we set limits on God's creativity. Um, if we look at creation, just at the, here being at the beach this week, I've been um, reflecting on God's amazing creativity, just the sheer number of fish in the ocean, you know, the colors, the variety. He's so creative. And if we let him be creative in our own lives through the power of his spirit, I mean, the, the results are just <laughs> beyond our wildest imagination. So we just need to let him be in charge and have fun. <laughs> So at, at the beginning, it was very apparent that the Holy Spirit was working in new ways in my life. And it was kind of an initial grace that I almost couldn't help it. But I realized after a while that I had to foster that relationship. And I realized right away that the way to foster that relationship is through docility, you know, through continually stepping back and letting the Holy Spirit take over. Pope Francis says that the church identifies seven a number that symbolically speaks of fullness and completeness. We learn in confirmation that those seven are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. The Catechism goes on to say about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is that they are permanent dispositions which, which make man docile in following the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And, and I think that's consistent with that image of, of the sail in the boat, that, that the sail is up and the boat simply moves wherever the wind takes it. The same thing with us is, is that there needs to be a docility to us, to the Holy Spirit. And, 
and, and we are, become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit moves us and takes us and helps us grow in the spiritual life. That's one of the things that's key about the Old Testament gifts of the Holy Spirit is they are ordered towards our sanctification to move the Christian life so that we can be more faithful to Christ. But the thing that's important is the gifts of the Holy Spirit are also very concrete. They're not just ideas out there, but we each receive these gifts of the Holy Spirit at baptism. We receive a strengthening and a greater outpouring in the gift of confirmation. But they're for a purpose. huh? They're not just this idea or esoteric thing, but they're concrete, real. That's one of the things I really like about Pope Francis when he's speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit is they're very concrete. He says sp specifically about the gift of the Holy Spirit of counsel. This is the gift which the Holy Spirit gives us to help us make decisions in our concrete lives. God enlightens our heart and directs our thoughts, words, and actions in, accordant with his, in accordance with his saving will. This gift helps us make decisions. So if, if we are faced with the decision we need to make, a new job, uh, to get married, uh, to move, that we pray for that gift of, of counsel which helps make God's will concrete to us. I think it's important that we understand that, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given for us, for our use, for our sanctification. It's particularly concrete in evangelization. And I, I often joke that I have made every mistake when it comes to evangelization, every mistake possible. And the truth is, is that the time when I'm least prepared, the time when I'm least ready to answer someone's questions is usually the time when I'm just free enough to say, God, take over. There's like one, in, one instance in particular that I remember this. I, was, I had an internship in Dallas one summer during college and I was sidewalk counseling. I was in front of an abortion clinic and it was like the most stressful job ever, but I was evangelizing I mean, that that's what it was. And I, you had 30 seconds to talk to these women and this one girl stopped to talk to me, which was so rare and I didn't know what to say and I was trying to convince her and I had all the arguments memorized and everything. It was so clear that she was gonna go into the clinic no matter what I said and she had long red hair, I remember this. And as she walked into the clinic, I started to panic. And I remember praying like, God, I do not know what to say here. And I, as she opened that door, I just opened my mouth and out came the word hair bows. And I remember literally thinking in my head, like you idiot, like of all the things you could have said, like hair bows. And she turned around and she was crying. And she walked towards me and she said, what do you say? What did you say? And I said, you know, if, you're, if you have a daughter, she might have red hair like you and you could, you could buy her hair bows. Think about like how fun that would be. And she just started bawling. And she said, you know, everyone in my life told me to do this. And my dad was a horrible, horrible man. He was nasty to me my whole life. The only compliment he ever gave me was about my red hair. And, he, and she said, he died four years ago and all week I've been praying like, dad, what do you think I should do? And she walked away. And I remember thinking, I could have never done that on my own. And I realized that day like, the Holy Spirit, all I need to do is back up. All I need to do is step back, be docile, and let him take over and not rely on myself. I can remember being before the Blessed Sacrament and kind of weighing my options. You know, Lord, there's this young man that I really like and um, I could see myself you know, pursuing marriage. Um, and of course, on a natural level, that was all wonderful. That's what every, every human heart is created for love and to give oneself. And so I knew that I could be very happy in that regard, but still there was this little very deep inside um, this this restlessness when I pictured myself as a married woman with a family as beautiful as that would be there was something uneasy about it and then when I would consider the possibility of religious life as crazy as that seemed you know me like the Lord would want me I like shopping too much I like boys too much you know all these these uh, things that people kind of knew me for. Oh, she's just wild and crazy. She likes to have a good time. She, she couldn't be a sister, you know? Um, I had all that going on in my head, and yet when I would sit in silence with the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and consider the possibility of a religious vocation, there was peace. When speaking about the New Testament gift, or what's kind of called the charismatic gifts, we often look at, at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, Paul speaking. Paul identifies the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, mighty deeds, prophecy, discernment of spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. And later in Romans and Ephesians, he mentions other gifts such as healing, administration, a variety of tongues, mighty deeds. 
just the point is, is that many places in the New Testament, Paul is speaking about gifts of the Holy Spirit or the charismatic gifts. And I think we need to be open to whatever the gifts of the Holy Spirit wants to give us. Uh, my feeling is that that's always a good place to be. Our stance before the Lord is, Lord, I want to be able to receive whatever you want to give so that if you want to shower and pour your gifts upon me, that's what I want to receive. The Charismatic Renewal has been around for almost 50 years. Uh, it was actually a movement that started in the United States. The key markers of the Charismatic Renewal are the gifts of the Holy Spirit and, and really being able to exercise and live in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, personal relationship with Christ, um, baptism in the Holy Spirit, evangelization. These are all markers or, or charisms of people who are involved in the Charismatic Renewal as a movement. But I think it's important that we point that out, that the Charismatic Renewal is a movement much like a Curcio movement or Engaged Encounter or Marriage Encounter or something like that, that there isn't, there isn't a, a monopoly on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that if you want the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you have to belong to the Charismatic Renewal. That simply isn't the case. It's just a movement within the church uh, that's really exercised and focused and, and maybe more open to receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The reason I mention that is, is over the years, I've met lots of people who maybe aren't very open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit because perhaps they've had a negative experience with somebody or some part of the charismatic renewal. And because of that, when you use the word charismatic, they get really antsy. And, and sometimes, honestly, that just closes them off and they're not open to experiencing all that God has for them in the Holy Spirit. So I think it's important that we just mention that, that the, the charismatic renewal is a great blessing to the church. It's done wonderful ministry and work in the church. Um, but it's not, one doesn't have to be in the charismatic renewal to receive the Holy Spirit. The other maybe just real quickly to mention is, is that the church by her nature is charismatic. When you take a look at the Second Vatican Council, the Council Fathers mentioned a couple of times that, that the church is by her very nature charismatic. One of the documents says that she's charismatic and she is hierarchical. She has gifts that are both. So because she's open to the Holy Spirit, as the church always is, she too is charismatic. The, the, the role of the, the, the movement, the Charismatic Renewal Movement, is to help people come into the awareness of the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, and the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so it's to stir up in the life of people uh, this sort of awareness of and learning for the, the, the gifts of, of, of the Holy Spirit. Because if you, you, you have different uh, groups uh, uh, trying to do different things. Uh, Mother Teresa's community, trying to stir up an awareness of, uh, of serving the poor. We all are called to serve the poor. We may not be called to serve the poor the way her sister serves the poor, but it's an awareness that she stirs up. And so I think that's the, the role of the, the, uh, the Charismatic Renewal Movement is to keep present in the minds of, the, of, of, of God's people, the role of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and the desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the differences between the New Testament gifts and the Old Testament gifts is the New Testament gifts are more for, for the building up of the church or for the building up the body. So take, uh, for example, somebody who has the gift of healing. I always like to think about Padre Pio, who was given a tremendous charismatic gift of healing. Well, that gift is, yes, it's for the healing of an individual. This person experiences the grace of that healing. Uh, what an amazing thing that is. But it's also for the gift of faith, is, is the individual who receives the healing is obviously built up in faith. But it's not just that individual, but it's the body. That, that when a community and a group of people come together and they pray for, for physical healing, somebody's sick, somebody has cancer, somebody has some illness, that, that when we come together as a people, as a body of Christ and pray for that healing, that does tremendous things for our faith, that, that our faith becomes more personal, it becomes more alive. But, but I think all too often we don't do that. We don't, you know, sure, maybe we pray for people who are sick, but we don't stop and pray and stop and say, Jesus, this person is ill, we ask that you would heal them. I think partly is because we really don't expect God to work like that. It, honestly, I think that's a question we need to ask ourselves. Do we expect God to work miraculously? Do we expect when we go before the Lord and stop and pray for somebody who is ill, do we really expect God to heal them? I, I think part of the thing is, is that we need to go before the Lord and we have to ask for that. We need to ask for the gift of faith, believing that God can actually do that. And then the next thing we need to do is exercise that.
so that if somebody comes up and they says that they're not feeling well or or somebody in their family's ill rather than just saying oh yeah yeah sure i'll pray just maybe every now and then just stop and say why don't we pray now what that does is it allows us uh, to experience god's manifestation to experience god's work in our life to bring forth healing you know the gifts of the spirit are on the prophet's control we don't have we can resist the action of the Holy Spirit if we want to, but really God wants the Holy Spirit to be acting in us. And so the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that was one. The first time that I uttered a, a prophetic utterance in public, it was like I was about to explode. And, and, and it, I'm thinking, somebody said, well, what is it, a profound utterance? No, it was simply this, God says that He loves us. But, but it but caused me to almost explode. It was like, wow, this is the Holy Spirit prompting me to speak. I had never done that before. So the gift of our prayer language, the gift of, uh, of, of, of prophecy, a gift of healing and miracles. You know, I always pray for people when I'm doing ministry. I always pray for miracles because people think that miracles are, that's for yesteryear. But that's one of the gifts that St. Paul lists, the gift of miracles. So I invite people to, are you in a situation where you need a miracle? You need an intervention of God, an intervention of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just stand up and we're going to pray that God would insert himself in the natural order of things. And it's amazing how many people, when you put it in that context, that the Holy Spirit, he, a shows, up. he shows up. Yeah. He's a principal agent upon the earth today, and he's ready to do miracles. And people need him, and we need him. I, I, wanted, I wanted the gifts. I wanted to build the kingdom of God through the supernatural because that's what he called us to do. And, you know, I started to pray for the gifts and healing and prophecy and, uh, you know, word of knowledge and started to experience them in, in really radical ways. And so... Me and my friends would, you know, go out on the streets and pray for people in Walmart. And I remember we went and prayed over two waitresses and Hooters. And when we started going to Chick-fil-A and praying over, you know, taking people's hands and pray with them at the cashier. And I just really, you know, became convicted and, and uh, just on fire for the reality of um, the gospel showing up to people uh, through the miraculous and through the Holy Spirit is because of this advocate that God has given us that we have the ability to to walk like the saints did and to walk like Jesus did. It, it's, it's a gift from God. You know, I, I remember in my own story, in my own story uh, after having been baptized in the Holy Spirit that night, uh, it was a year later, I had not spoken in tongues yet. And I kept waiting for the Lord to zap me. And I keep saying to the Lord, whenever you're ready, you can zap me. And I was in a prayer meeting and I was sitting in a, in a corner. I wasn't leading it that night. I was sitting in a corner and I'm talking to the Lord. And I said, Lord, you know, tonight, if you want to give me the gift of tongues, I'm open to it. And clearly in my heart, there was no voice. I heard, I'm waiting for you. And I said, what do you mean you're waiting for me? Aren't you supposed to zap me? He says, no. He says, I want you to release your control to me. Let me have full authority over you. Okay, how about I do it when I go into my bedroom tonight? No, no. Are you afraid to be made a fool of me, uh, for me tonight in front of all these people? Yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, I want you to be made a fool of. I said, right now? He said, I want you to open your mouth and I want you to just babble. Don't worry what it sounds like. Just release it. I said, okay. So I started babbling. And very shortly, I could tell the difference between my babbling and the gift of prayer, you know? And it was very, very clear to me, God was waiting for me to release my control so that He can show me His love. I think we need to be more open to God working in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in, in our life. And I think one of the things that we need to realize is, is that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, sometimes we feel, well, those aren't for me. I mean, God doesn't want me to, to give a prophetic word or to be able to speak in that manner, or God doesn't want to use me for miracles, or God doesn't want to use me for healing. Maybe he'll, he'll do holy people, he'll bless holy people or priests or religious, but, but not me. And, and, and I just don't think that's true. I think that God wants to be able to shower the gifts of the Holy Spirit upon his people. What we have to ask ourselves are, are we open to them? Are we open to receiving them? Lord, I'm open to receiving whatever gift that you want to give me. I think that's one of the things that we need is, is that we go before the Lord, as we heard earlier, with a sense of docility. Lord, I want you to be able to do whatever you want in my life. And the other thing about the gifts is, 
that I just don't believe they're for just a select few or for the outstanding, but I believe as the Vatican documents say that those gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to the people of God generously. So that we need to be open to be able to receiving those gifts. I believe that anyone and everyone that has uh, uh, been baptized in the Holy Spirit has, has the life of God in them. Potentially, we have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, you can't have the Holy Spirit and not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They go together. And so when people, when people want to separate the two and, I, 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 and say, well, no, we have some gifts. No, we have all the gifts. We may not exercise all the gifts, but they're all there. Those gifts are in us. I have so many parts of my body that I may not ever exercise and, and, and use fully, but the, they're still there. And if I decide to, to exercise it, I, I, will, I will be able to uh, use them in a, in a fuller way. I think a lot of times we forget that that's what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to walk like Him, and He gave us the authority to do it. And so I started experiencing my life um, just amazing things on a regular basis. You know, no matter what, if I was in an airport, going to get some subway, you know, just stepping out in faith and being like, hey, can we pray real quick? Is there something wrong? You know, there's only a couple of times that, you know, I received a word of knowledge for someone's back or something in their life. And in those moments, it was like, incredible you know like they they were shocked they uh you know they were extremely moved you know and i and i really believe that because of the holy spirit because of the baptisms of the holy spirit and the and the gifts i mean not just the miraculous stuff i mean i've experienced the joy in my life that no party no drug no hookup with any girl or anything has been able to compare to you know and it's just been an amazing journey of of going into a deeper truth that this is who we're called to be. We're called to be, called to be saints. Sometimes when I'm talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, many times actually, I've heard people say to me, yeah, I'm, I'm just not really that interested in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I just, I wanna seek the giver, not the gift. And while I appreciate that, because I've met people who make the gifts um, everything. I mean, they, they just wanna get a particular gift or, they're just interested or focusing on one particular gift. And, and I think that can be the detriment of our spirituality is that there's not an openness. But I also don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. I don't think it's, I'm gonna seek the giver, not the gift, as if if we seek the giver, we're not gonna receive the gifts. Or if we're open to the gifts in some way, we're gonna lose sight of the giver of the gift. Uh, I think we do both of those together is that we go before the Lord and we seek, as I said at the very beginning, we seek the Holy Spirit who is the gift par excellence. But then we also ask the Lord to open our hearts so as to be able to receive whatever gifts that He wants to give us. The Lord is the giver of the gift. We simply need to be the receiver. I think we need to be much like Mary who went before God and said, be it done unto me according to your will that we receive the Holy Spirit. And as we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive the gifts that sanctify us and we receive gifts that help us build up the body. So here's my encouragement for you. To be able to take a few minutes and seek the gift. And that is, as we heard Pope Francis say, the gift is the Holy Spirit. So just ask that the Holy Spirit would once again fill you, that the Holy Spirit would come to you, that the Holy Spirit would make himself known to you. And then after that, just pray for an outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You've been given those gifts in baptism. They've been confirmed to you in the sacrament of confirmation. So just pray for that. Pray that, if you will, the sail will go up. That can help us move. That can help us grow in holiness. But then also pray for the supernatural gifts. Pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we find in the New Testament. Uh, that the Lord maybe wants to use you to heal other people. Maybe the Lord wants to give you the gifts to be able to speak to other people and help bring them to you. Uh, bottom line, pray for an openness to the Holy Spirit and an openness to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Lord, your Holy Spirit is the wind and, and it gives us life. Lord, we pray for greater gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray for greater knowledge and greater wisdom and greater understanding and counsel, piety and fear of the Lord. Lord, we wanna come before you open, open to receive whatever gift that you wanna provide us. We come before you with a heart which is willing and able to receive. Jesus, come with your Holy Spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, Spirit, come. Oh, 
Oh, sweet. 